This morning in a special holiday edition of The Dish, closing out 2021 with the man who's just been named the best restaurateur in the world. That is not praise from a critic, it's his colleagues. 184 of the world's best restaurants say no one does it better than Danielle Balloud. Balloud first made his mark in the early 90s at his namesake restaurant here in New York City, Danielle. Over the decades, Balut has opened new places across the globe. But this year, it was a new location in his adopted hometown that's getting all the attention. It's been called the most important new restaurant opening in the history of New York City. A lot of people know Oysters Rockefeller. Not everybody knows Oysters Vanderbilt. Nobody knows Oyster Vanderbilt except if you have been to Le Pavillon. The original Le Pavillon started as a restaurant operated by Henri Soleil in the French Pavilion at the 1939 World's Fair in New York. By 1941, it had transformed into a fixed location that would become a watershed establishment in American culinary history. Are you trying to match that? No, it's more a reference to the past, something very French and something very New York. From its crossroads location in Midtown Manhattan, Le Pavillon defined French cooking in the United States for more than a quarter century. When it shut down 50 years ago, it left a giant open table on the restaurant scene that hasn't really been filled until now. From the window of the bar, you can see seven landmarks in New York, including the Chrysler Building, Grand Central, of course. Perhaps no one was better suited to reimagine Le Pavillon than Danielle Balloud, the French-born master who's been dazzling diners since arriving stateside in the 1980s. Though, if you're expecting the same old French fare here, think again. Is there something you want diners to take away from this restaurant that they may not get at one of your other restaurants? Well, yeah, maybe this one is the least French. The light-filled room features an expansive indoor garden and a menu that's 50% seafood, 40% vegetables, just 10% meat. I think it, it is contemporary in its approach to French fine dining. And I think today we are all transitioning into fine casual, but how casual do we want to get versus remain a place that it feels a celebration and yet you can also come very often. Before we dug into Balud's Christmas feast, a tantalizing sample, a tribute to the man who not only championed Grand Central Station, but for whom the building we're in was named. What is the oyster Vanderbilt? The oyster Vanderbilt, it's a baked oyster. So the oyster have been lightly baked in the oven. And then what we do, we take part of the oysters to make a chowder. And I have some leeks, so we are putting some leeks on the bottom of the shell. You've always been big on oysters at holiday meals. Yes. Why? It's a winter shellfish. In the old days, they used to say that any months in R, from September to April, you could eat shellfish. I'm getting very hungry. And then over the oysters goes a crust. And this crust is made of seaweed and uh, as a nut butter and herbs. And that goes into the salamander, so you can bake that in the oven, otherwise. And uh, we're gonna wait two minutes and have an oyster Vanderbilt. Okay. <laughs> Voila. Can we eat? Yep, we are ready. You can take a spoon, and you try to be careful because the chowder inside is a little bit liquid, so you go underneath, and you pick up your oyster like this. Oh, wow. And, and of that course, exquisite. you want to scrap the shell and get all this delicious crust and oyster. Mm. Fantastic. Well done. I'm going to have another one. I will, too. Oysters Vanderbilt was one of the dishes Balud's team prepared for a sumptuous holiday spread that included, just to start, a winter salad with black truffles and celery roots, spinach with grapes and pickled jalapeno, and a roasted beet salad coated with sesames. The seeds, mm -hmm. they make it. 
Oh, completely. They make the whole thing. Because we cut the slice of beet with the sesame and then we roast it on the sesame and let it toast. And that, I think, really give uh, the dish some particular flavor. Have a little bit of lobster. I'm going to. The lobster salad included gem lettuce, herbs, and radish. There was grilled avocado with acorn berry and a green goddess dressing, plus tuna tartare with fennel and olive saka. All leading up to the piece de resistance, a roast chicken with truffles tucked under the skin, served with potatoes and winter vegetables. How do you get the truffles just underneath the skin? Ah. <laughs> Well, you have to pass your finger between the skin and the flesh of the chicken along the breast and the legs, and then you have to slide in the slice of truffle underneath. For dessert, Baloo took things over the top. A spider-like hazelnut cake, black forest cake, his take on apple pie topped with a curved, thin puff pastry, and the gâteau de voyage, pound cake filled with almonds and candied fruits. In the 1700s in France, they were traveling with their own cakes and things, and they created a gâteau du voyage, which was a cake that could last a couple of days without refrigerating. Le Pavillon's opening here was momentous, happening on the very day New York City began accepting diners again at full capacity. How tough for you have the last two years been? I mean, it has been the toughest year we ever came across. Uh, we had to furlough 800 people a year and a half ago. But most important was to bring back staff. And we did that gradually. And I think today we have about 550 employees back. And I have a few more restaurants to open. So it's good. People have been coming here to make up for lost celebrations. Oh, totally. And we, we see it every day. People want to indulge in good wine, great food. People want to have fun. Fun, food, wine, and health. All things to be grateful for as we celebrate this second holiday season amid these most unusual times. For me, the holiday is also a nice cocktail or champagne. <laughs> We've got our hands full here. I know, totally, but I'd go for the champagne. Uh, happy holidays. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Happy holiday.